Hey everybody, just before this video starts, please consider going down below and subscribing to my channel if you are new. If you have watched any of my previous videos and are enjoying my content, then it would mean the world to me if you would actually subscribe to my channel. As you can see, we are just about halfway to my subscriber goal there. We need a thousand to actually become a YouTube partner. As far as the watch hours go, you guys have crushed it. You've blown it out of the water. 248 watch hours over what is needed already. So I'm extremely grateful for that, but let's try to hit a thousand subscribers. McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode 18 of this Edmonton Oilers franchise mode, currently in the franchise frenzy. And to start things off here, I mean, I went through and I was doing my recording and my Elgato software lagged out. So then when I went to go back and re-record this from the start of the playoffs, the save wasn't there on my Xbox. So this is where we left off. We're down three to one against the Colorado Avalanche and um well I mean we'll go through the Avalanche lineup here if you guys missed the last episode we also went through and looked at their lineup but they're still a good team don't get me wrong like they got some good players here they got this Abraham trip they drafted second overall he's a good player you know Landis Cog is a second overall as well so they've got they've got some really good players in this team for sure as far as our team goes, our guys have been struggling, for sure. And um, the 3-1 score definitely defines that. So I was messing around with the lines here. I think we're going to leave things pretty much the way they were for the most part. I mean, nobody's really been performing on our team, so we could really use somebody stepping up here to uh, get things done. But overall, it has just been difficult here. And, I mean, I'm tempted to play games, but you guys have gone against that, said, hey, no, don't play games, you make it unfair. And I think the only way that that would be unfair, or the only way that would be fair, would be if we change the difficulty to, um, what do you call it, if we change the difficulty to Superstar, maybe? It's on All-Star right now, so honestly... We're down 3-1. We're kind of like we got our backs against the wall here. I'm going to put it on Superstar, and I, I want to play. I want to help the Oilers out here because, really, they just have not been playing well in the simulations, even though, you know, we're a 55-win team. That is insane that we're not winning games in the playoffs. So Game five's a must-win. There's no question about it, and we're going to play on Superstar here for now. So heading into Game 5 here, It would be huge. Oh, great start. It'd be huge if we could walk away with a win here. We outshoot Colorado 12-10. to 10. Those two extra shots were two extra goals there as McDavid and Chubasov both find the net. Second period, we're up 3 nothing. It would be lovely if I don't have to play on Superstar to start here, but power play. And of course, Colorado's going to find the net. They've had like a 90% power play conversion this series. Like, what What did I just say, hey? And you know what we do? We don't score on power plays because we are that bad a team, apparently. Way to go, Edmonton. Like, you guys are just about blowing this opportunity. A power play goal would go a long way in my books, but nope, somehow we're still winning. Don't ask me how because, honestly, this Oilers team has really not played anywhere up to near their potential, but we still get the win. So... We cannot shut down Abraham Tripp at all right now. He's been a serious problem. And we're still alive heading to Colorado for game six. Dear God, we cannot get knocked out first round. That is just unacceptable as a championship franchise here. Why is it not? All right. Okay, guys, so heading into Game 7, our team has really not played that well, but it would be really nice to actually get a win here. So, unfortunately, you can see at the top, the Condors did get eliminated from the playoffs, so that sucks, but 
We outshoot Colorado 16-6 on home ice here in Game 7. Tyler Benson gets the opening goal on a power play, and then Nazem Kadri ties it up. We get a 2-1 lead here from Yuri Chubisov. And really, that could determine the game here, possibly. We are completely out shooting Colorado at this point, but leave it to this Oilers team to give up a goal. And as they do. <laughs> so, power play for Colorado. Edmonton scores shorthanded. Hold on. Hold on. Edmonton scored shorthanded on that? Really? I don't know if it was shorthanded, but still. Just a couple minutes left. Colorado ties it. You gotta be kidding me, man. And Yamamoto with a minute and a half left. Let's go, buddy. Oh, that was huge. Oh my gosh, Kyler Yamamoto, you clutch, clutch player. What a play. And Kyler Yamamoto wins the series in the last minute and a half of Game 7. Absolutely fabulous there from him. That was the only play he really made where he actually scored or did anything. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. What a night for these boys. And they finally come through here. So, that was too close. But by the looks of it, next episode, we should be taking on the San Jose Sharks. We'll double check to make sure that that's actually happening. And, yes, we will be playing san jose in the next round after being down by an awful deficit there were we down three nothing i think it was close to that i want to double check i think we were down three nothing or no you're we down three one i believe yeah yeah we won one in there but we had to win three straight to get through this avalanche team and that was tough so yeah next episode We'll be going up against San Jose for sure. Let's check out their team because honestly, we're coming up against teams that are not well-rounded, but they just perform really well. So, Gee, this is a well-rounded team, I have to say. 19 years old and 90 rated. How many points did he score? Jeez. Mikhail Semin is actually insane for San Jose right now. Okay. So yeah, this team's not poorly rounded by any means, but I'm not going to say they're very well rounded either. So that's the team we're going up against next episode. They got no goaltending, so that should be where we just light them up is on the offense. Yes, they got some defense, but their top two defenders are offensive defensemen. So don't ask me how that's working, but it is, and uh, they got through a team already, so... Since this episode has really just been so short, thanks to all the footage cuts and Elgato errors and stuff like that, we're going to try to continue on here. Uh, hopefully, we can get through the second round of the playoffs without as much difficulty as the first round experience. Not so much just with the gameplay, but also with the uh, technical difficulties. So, I mean, we just looked over uh san jose's roster and lineup they've got a good team don't get me wrong there so we're gonna take this very wearily here as uh you know we were losing quite badly to colorado so let's see what we can do against the sharks so game one in edmonton we find ourselves up 2-1 off the first period up 16 to 10 goals from yamamoto and rudolph shoots mckenzie Weger getting a goal on carter hart there okay as far as the second period goes, we give up two goals and only score one. Rudolph Schutz gets the lone goal, but Carlson and Kachir both getting goals there in the second period for the Sharks. So heading into the third, we got to win this game. And Heiskanen doing well to get us the lead, but a power play for San Jose does not convert. Thank God that would have been really bad. And um, we're maintaining this lead for now. I'm probably jinxing it just talking about it, but... Not much time left in the game, just three minutes, and uh, things are looking good here as the Oilers do walk away with a 4-3 victory here on home ice. So yeah, Rudolph shoots his two goals, obviously proved to be the difference, and we are up 1-0 in this series. Looks like the Dallas Stars are as well. We have not met those guys. Okay, so just looking over my entire playoff history here, guys, we have literally played San Jose 
almost every single year we've been in the playoffs here. We played them in 2021. We played them in 2022. That was second round the first year that we won the cup. We met them in the conference finals the second year. The third year was the year we didn't play them. Last year, we met them in the second round as well. And this year, we've met them in the second round. So, honestly, we've got to be San- one of San Jose's worst nightmares as we have just always been the better team by the looks of it. Or we've always ended up walking away with the wins in the playoff series. And again, that trend seems to continue here as McDavid, Benson, and Schutz all find the net against Eric Comrie in the first period. Second period, we split even with the Sharks as Kachir and Heiskanen get goals. And we are tied 18 apiece on shots. Let's see how the third period goes. So 5-1 there. uh, Joachim Nygaard and then 6-1 from Timoshov right after. And then a power play for the Oilers, which obviously we don't convert because we're not a good power play team. But 6-1 is a pretty good cushion. 7-1 make it Marcus Nold. Holy. Leon Dreisaitl make it 8-1. And uh, yeah, we just peppered them. Oh my god. (laughs) All right, so yeah, um, talk about a stat padding night as Miro Heiskanen gets five points, Benson gets four, and Chubisov gets three. Holy crap, what a first two games as the Oilers head to San Jose with a 13-4 to goal difference in two games. That is crazy. Okay, Tyler Benson, 14 points in just nine games. Really good in the playoffs. And, well, now we are heading over to the SAP Center here in San Jose to see if we can potentially get a split or even a sweep, dare I say. So, first period, 0-0 San Jose defending home ice quite strongly there as we only get three shots on them in the first period. They get 13 but do not score. Second period, we find ourselves up 2-1 as we get 20 shots in the period. San Jose only gets 7. Bouchard and Yamamoto find the back of the net within 15 seconds of each other. And then, how do you even say that? Chamel- Chamelvsky? I think it's Chamelvsky. Don't, get, don't quote me on that because honestly, I don't know. But he scores on Carter Hart there with just three minutes left in the second period. So very good uh, bounce back there after a very slow first period. I love how this Oilers team responds. So heading into the third, obviously the goal here is to potentially get the win still. And doesn't look like that's necessarily happening as Evander Kane finds the back of the net right off the bat in the second or third period. Mikhail Semin makes it 3-2. Benson makes it 3-3. Oilers grab a power play, but do not convert on it. And this is a seriously close game at this point. So, power play for San Jose. They do not convert. And we are not heading to overtime as Logan Couture finds the back of the net with no time left and gets a single victory here for the Sharks in Game 3. So... That's a tough loss. Logan Couture obviously going to get first star of the game as he got the game-winning goal. But still not a bad performance from the boys. They gave up four, yes, but they still scored three. They were right there. It was just a matter of timing, really. And I didn't even know Chubasov was injured. So (laughs) heading into game four, we look to get the split. Otherwise, this series may drag out longer than I expected. But here we go. So... 1-1 1-1 off the bat, we get outshot 11-9 goals from Couture on the power play and then Nygaard with two minutes left in the period. Second period, Rudolph shoots, finds the back of the net just a minute into the second, and then we proceed to get thoroughly outshot by the San Jose Sharks yet again in that period. So, heading into the third and final period of game four, power play for the Oilers, they obviously do not convert. That is just becoming a negative trend at this point, and it is not looking good. But we still have the lead, so that is a good thing. We are getting heavily outshot right now by almost 10 shots difference. But by the looks of it, we may just walk out of here with a 2-1 or with a 1-1 split and a 2-1 victory. So 41 shots for San Jose. That's got to be rough. Carter Hart gets first start of the game with a 9.75 save percentage there. 
And we are just one game away from knocking out the San Jose Sharks in back-to-back -back second rounds here. We did beat them 4-1 to last year. By the looks of it, Dallas has got the upper hand against um, Nashville, and then the Eastern Conference is all tied up to a piece all around. So, here we go. Game 5 back in Edmonton. This may just be home ice advantage at this point. And it looks like it as Yamamoto gets a goal halfway through the first. We outshoot the Sharks by 5 shots. It's looking pretty good here to start. Second period, we give up the goal there. Kevin LeBanc getting the game tying goal there halfway through the second and really this is where it just comes down to the wire so i think we are going to jump in watch the gameplay here and uh commentate along with it as we could potentially be knocking out the san jose sharks here in just game five so just to show you guys we are still on superstar there you should have seen that and then audio and visual settings, we have the commentator off, and we are playing on a dynamic high. So here we go. Rogers Place is buzzing as the Oilers look to potentially knock off the Sharks here. Superstar is a very difficult game mode, guys. I will say that. So let's see what we can do here as they put enough pressure on me to almost turn the puck over. They're really going to run McDavid, hey? Dry sidle. Oh, just missed that one. You know he can shoot from just about anywhere. Can I please get a charge on that play? Dear God. Shoots, where you going, buddy? And here we go. Leon dry sidle, one on one against Carlson. Should be pretty. Stri okay, Eric Carlson should never recover against Dreisaitl on that play. There's just no way that would realistically happen. So here we go, Rudolph shoots. Gonna try to get a shot off there, and it's blocked yet again. I love how slowly my players react here. Oh, that was a penalty. Get your bitch ass out of here. Come on. That's a weak penalty, man. The guy just played the puck, and you're going to give me a boarding call? Like, okay. So, we just got to kill this off now, really. That would be the biggest thing about this penalty kill here. Oh, don't let him shoot those. There we go, Evan Bouchard. Great play. And let's see what you can do here as he doesn't even get a shot on net. But the puck does end up in Comrie's glove. So really not great here to start the third period. The penalty obviously is not a great thing to have in general. And yeah, we're just looking to really kind of maintain a tie here at this point. Okay, if you don't call a charge on that, then there's no penalties in this game. Come on! Man, you gotta be kidding me. Haha, <laughs> blocked your goal. You don't get a goal. McDavid still showing off the hands there, but did not exactly convert it. I feel like if we had hit a player there, it may have just been too many men. Good save, Carter Hart. And... Final five seconds, leave it to me to give up a goal right about here, but no, instead, we are going to get Chubasov back out, and he's going to try to just do his franchise kind of stuff that he does here, so 
gets a shot, good chance, and we do manage to kill off that penalty. As you can see there, Yuri Chubisov right up in the top five and hits in the playoffs so far. So we do have McDavid on the wing, which I don't know how well that's really been working so far, but we have one game, so maybe that is what's making the difference here. Nice hit by Vaikanainen as he really seriously lays the body on that play. Gonna hit Yamamoto with the pass here, and he's gonna dodge the hit, look across, and McDavid just decided not to shoot the puck until he was behind the net. So nice hit though by Drysidel, and Odd Man Rush doesn't exactly occur. Blocked by Kyle Wood. Okay, come on. Like you can't just consistently hit players. It doesn't always work like that. Oh my gosh, the puck is in behind Comrie and not in the net as it hit Marcus Nold instead of bouncing into the net. So, yeah, um, oh well, <laughs> happens I guess, but that was brutal. We definitely had our chances so far, haven't exactly converted on them. And Galant, oh, gonna let Chimvelski just get right in, shoot the puck whenever he feels like it, and, uh, oh, terrible giveaway there. Luckily, Carter Hart is on his game. And making stops for our team here as we would really be in a tough spot if it was not for him. Good hit there. Max Jones going to pick up the puck and ice it. Great job, buddy, you fourth liner. <laughs> Oops. So we need a face-off win here and Marcus Nold messes it up quite handily. Good job there though, Benson going to pick the puck up, I know this defenseman's eyeing me up for a hit, and nobody can manage to get their stick on the puck here except for some San Jose players really, so Marcus Nold going to get hit yet again, but almost a good play there to break it up. This is not looking ideal, yikes, good save though, okay, come on, if we can't make a backhand pass, we shouldn't be playing in the NHL, dear god. <laughs> We're throwing the top line back out there against their second line. And uh, maybe this will pay off. Maybe it won't, as our top line's defense seems to be pretty garbage. You, ha like, you have to be kidding me. That's just so superstar. Like, I can't do anything about that. I'm literally directly on top of Logan Couture. And he still makes the pass through my defenseman's feet, perfectly onto the tape of Advander Kane. Welcome to Superstar Mode, guys. This is what you signed me up for, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Not at all. You have got to be shitting me. Call a Holden. Call Fuck off, you piece of shit. Buddy, that's just a straight charge. He takes four strides into the hit. Holy hell. Okay, time to start leveling, guys. Advander Kane has no defensive... Okay, yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's go, Benson, you... F or Semen. Semen's the real piece of shit here. Really? I, I hate those fights when the guy just pulls you down, doesn't actually take a punch. Like, yeah, go sit in the box for five minutes, you bitch. I don't appreciate it when a guy won't actually fight me. So we got a power play. We have to convert here. There's no other option, really. Yeah, don't play it, Comrie. You go, Commie. <laughs> All right. Come 
Marcus Nold, hit the net. That's the only play you have to make. And if you do, we are totally fine. I'm sorry, but Heisken is just faster than three quarters of the league. Why, why do we have... Why is this power play group out right now? We got one minute left, and frickin' Merkley's stepping up like a frickin' winger. Okay, come on! You've got to be kidding me at this point. <laughs> and he's going to be a little baby and swing his hands like he, like he got slashed. He didn't get slashed. If we wanted to slash him, we'd break his wrist. Okay? So, like, just stop already. We are a superior team to the San Jose team in every single way. And they're just charging us like the little scared cowards they are. Yeah, just play possession the entire time, you Guess what Chubasov's gonna do? He's gonna tie the game up because he has that skill. Way to go, San Jose. What were you expecting? We have better players than you in every single position on the ice. So, yeah. Get a reality check. We're still winning this game. 24 seconds left. We got it tied. We got some of the best players in the league on the ice right now. Like, look at the back check from Chubasov there. Okay, you know what, Kitcher? You know what, Kitcher? No. So we're headed to overtime, and really, it shouldn't—it shouldn't even be at this point. But we did manage to get it tied, and uh, yeah, that was a bit of a crapshoot. So, sudden death, and uh, we are probably going to be on a PK here for about 40 to 50 seconds. But McDavid going to get the draw there. Of course, we get tied up. How many more passes can you make? So we're going to hit dry sidle here. They're going to try to step up, but Merkley's weak. McDavid, I swear to God. How bad are you? Like, why are we paying you? That's the game on your stick right there. What do you do? I like, I literally clicked that perfectly. I, that was a perfect play there. What does McDavid do? He waits. He waits all the way until he crosses the goal line to shoot it again. Like, that did not hit a goalie's pad or anything. Literally, like, look at how much room he has to put this puck in the net. He's got half the net almost. What does he do? He waits. And then shoots it once it's behind the net. Why? Like, there's just simply no logic in that play. You know what, Evander Kane? If you're not going to take a hooking penalty on that call, then what the heck is this game doing? Okay, another two-on-one. Of course, McDavid can't make the pass now because he's just been absolutely useless. Fortunately, Drysaddle's got enough skill to make plays here. Okay, come on. They always go for the pass. Great giveaway. Fortunately, we are back to 5-on-5, five five, but this is an odd man rush in a very dangerous position. I'm trying to make a pass. Let me make the pass, you poke-checking, hooking little boys. Oh, nice pass. Like, really nice pass. Perfectly on the tape, too, of course. I'm loving all the little supporting plays here that we're making. Good shot. Timoshov rebound. Oh, shoots. Like, literally, shoot. He didn't, didn't score. <laughs> Stop. 
You just constantly, constantly hook, tug, slash, whatever it is, and there's no penalties ever. Like, look at the charge. Um, no, I'm sorry. You're not out skating Oscar Clefbaum. That is just a simple... Oh, <laughs> this game is so stupid. Oscar Clefbaum would never get outskated. That play would never go down into our end. He would cut it off at the blue line because that's the play I'm making. But, you know, All-Star, or not, not even All-Star, sorry, Superstar, is a joke. Okay, guys, just letting you know that. What you're watching right now is complete comedy. It's not even entertainment. It's just comedy. Because of how unrealistic, stupid, shall I say just primitive these game mechanics are. Like, seriously. Now that the rant is over, let's try to actually beat San Jose here. I don't want to have to play any games anymore honestly this is just it's gotten to the point where it's like get out of my face let's just sweep these guys and move on to the next round because we've allowed two losses that they probably didn't even deserve to win so chubasov starts it off like he always does because he's just that good one nothing edmonton first period second period we do allow a goal but mcdavid and yamamoto are there to back us up before we do allow that goal. It's just 37 seconds left. Mikhail Semin, obviously San Jose's best player at this point. And, dear God, just get rid of these guys already. I'm frustrated enough with them. So, although they are out shooting us, doesn't matter. We got the better goalie. We got the way better defense. And, uh, power play doesn't convert, shouldn't. And uh, they do get one here with seven minutes left. Actually, no. Of, of course, of course, we give up three goals. Oh, wow. You guys ready for a seven-game series? I'm jumping in and playing again. Because our team just simply can't win on a sim. All right, so time to knock these boys out. It's next goal wins, and, well, we started off real good getting the puck down deep in our own end. And Tomas Hurdle going to try for a really unrealistic chance, really. So here comes McDavid now, going to cut back, pull the trigger, and obviously Comrie's going to make the save when he's shooting from that far out. Here comes McDavid, going to hit dry sidle. Okay, Comrie. I didn't realize you were a 92-rated goalie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, um, what's his name, Dreisaitl would pick a spot there and finish it, but, you know, apparently not. Okay, so our elite blue line here really getting the job done by putting us offside, and, uh, um, no, 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 Bouchard got there in time. Can we please watch this play again? Bouchard is there. Like, he is there. Oh, cool. The puck bounces over his stick. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So, yeah, that's a fair goal, but um, a real crappy one at that. So, yeah, we blow yet another game. I hope you guys are super entertained with this, because I certainly am. That's the only... That's all this is, really. It's not actually a competition. It's just a joke. All right, so... Game 7, Tyler Benson hasn't scored in like 5 games, at least 5 games, so I don't know what our team's issues are, but they sure as hell are not getting us wins here, so of course we give up the opening goal to, I don't even know who this guy is, Gallant, and then Chubaso fortunately gets us tied up. We get a 3-2 lead after the second from goals with Chubasov or not Chubasov. Dreisaitl and shoots, and then um, Evander King gets one with 20 seconds left. Where's the defense? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yet again, we are in a very tight game that we shouldn't be in. Um, and there you go, it's 3-3, because NHL loves screwing me over. Where is the talent on San Jose? I'm just not seeing it. Okay, they have one 20-year-old prodigy 
who was a first overall pick. Good for him. We have three. Like, <laughs> maybe not three first overall picks. We got three franchise players who should just be lighting the hell out of this other San Jose team here. And, uh, oh, really, Chubasov doesn't even know how to take a face-off. Gotta love it. Oh, that was just sweet. That was just sweet. Yamamoto actually hits the target like a superstar difficulty bot would. Except I'm controlling him and he's better than 95% of their wingers. Thank you. That's how it's supposed to go in the net. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, finally we get one here. But you know what? We'll probably still lose this game. I'm just, I'm going to say that right now because of how bad our team's played. So... Yeah. Eight minutes left. I can't even win a freaking face off. And there you go. That's how the game should work because it constantly happens to me like that. Oh, nice hook. Just straight up hook by Logan Couture. Like, that's really what it was. Are, are you kidding me right now? Who was that? Salmon? Yeah, it was. What a absolute goof. Bouchard going to tee one up. McDavid banks it off the goalie and in shorthanded. That's that's what a franchise player should be able to do in clutch moments like this. Like, that was just fabulous. That was like a Sidney Crosby behind the goal line kind of thing. Way to go, Eric Comrie. You didn't get to your post in time, buddy. So, uh, yeah, we get a 5-4 lead here. This is superstar, guys. I am absolutely trying my hardest right now. And we still have a minute of penalty to kill. So, let's get the puck in deep. Go from there, see how it goes. Absolutely great defense on the breakout. We're going to send this one all the way back down. <laughs> Jesus, that's so close. Oh, that's not a penalty. Yeah, boo the ref already. That's so bad. It's not a penalty if the guy's just played the puck. And then he turns as you hit him. Oh, five-minute major on McDavid. Why? Because he scored the game or the go-ahead goal. That's why it's a five-minute. Thanks for the puck. I am seriously surprised that that was a five minute. Get robbed yet again. Carter Hart is so good. And we got four minutes and 25 seconds to kill. The rest of the game, talk about a really bad ref. Of course, of course they're going to score on a five minute penalty. Like, do we have Vegas 2.0 occurring right here? Because that's what I'm watching right now, really. And all we can say is the refs are garbage. All right, so OT, we forced it. Obviously, we were down 3-2 there, but... Um, or 4-3, not 3-2, sorry. But that was still pretty bad, so... Yeah, we still got time to kill here, and honestly, yes, we got the German connection out. Oh, speaking of which, Dreisaitl going to wrap that around the net and hit the back of the net in the... K. Okay. If you don't call the boarding calls, the constant boarding calls, then, like, what are you doing? Oh, my, dry sidle. And there it is. Thank you. That's what a man advantage on, in overtime is supposed to look like. <sighs> we finally get the victory. It takes so much effort and our highest skilled players to do it. But it got done. 
for what is that five years in a row now that we have surpassed the second round of the playoffs that's that's very good boys but you seriously struggled this year all the other years we've been through in six or less games and uh yeah this year was definitely a bit of a stress case here so we do get the victory just great job overall even without mcdavid that was stupid but whatever and uh dry gonna get more points than yamamoto but yamamoto is gonna get that uh first star of the game for the game winner 53 shots against and only five goals given up nice carter hart real nice so that is going to wrap up not only what I would call an error-filled, but also a stressful and technically difficult episode. So at first, I want to apologize to you guys for all the issues we had with the tech, but you better be happy that we made it past uh, the San Jose Sharks in such fashion like that, as we are going to go up against the Nashville Predators for the first time in playoff history here. I believe so that will be next episode and uh we still got another canadian team in here with toronto and new york is also there so we have seen both those teams before in the finals if we make the finals that is because well let's see how nashville is looking so the nashville predators are a sick team oh my god Gosh, they got Shane Wright. They got Pooley They got Alex Nylander. Wow. Okay, this is actually a team that has the right to beat us here. Like, holy. Not just the right, they have the players to do so as well. Like, that is scary, man. That is a good team. If Robin Lehner and Net, he definitely played for us for a couple seasons there. Yeah, you can see him Edmonton there last two. Played in Philly with the Carter Hart trade. Now he's in Nashville. He got 45 wins. Oh my gosh. Talk about depth beyond belief here. They have nobody below an 81 in almost their entire team. Their defense is a slight bit weaker, but... And comparing to ours, it's about the same besides, you know, the franchise players. Like, if we look here, yeah, we have some better players if you really look at it. But at the same time, like, they have got serious depth throughout the entire team here. We're going to try Adam Ernie back in here for the first couple games of this next series, see how that goes. Can you imagine if we had Rudolph Schutz? on the first line putting up Yamamoto's numbers right now. So yeah, he scored 56 this year. If Rudolph Schutz scored 86 this year instead of 56, would he be at a 90 already? I think he would be. But the problem is the chemistry is just not really there as much. And not only that, but the size isn't really there as much either as you know the two six foot fives together really balances out this team a bit better um honestly we could try that next season maybe see if rudolph shoots fits on that first line i mean he does we know he does but uh when you take into account the chemistry boosts on this team we don't have a player below 80 and uh that's a really good sign and then we got an 87 26 year old carter hart backed up by Stuart skinner this team should be able to win everything. Obviously, we will struggle throughout the rest of these playoffs and, of course, into the offseason. But uh, the two other remaining teams is this Toronto team right here, which is, you know, they're pretty good. They're not spectacular like they used to be, but they're, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good still. I will say that. And then besides that, we also got the New York Rangers, who are way better than they used to be i will give them that they are way better how is philip Hedl all the way up at a 90 overall as a medium top six forward beats me it honestly does how many points did he score oh yeah 92 okay <laughs> jeez caco got 91 
And Panarin got 76. Okay. Ryan Strom, another ex oiler really here. Um, ridiculously high rated. And then I would say the back end's really their weakness at this point. Oh, yeah. For sure, compared to the other teams that they will go up against. But don't count the Rangers out. They got the offense. They got the offensive horses to win this still. And uh, yeah, that'll be next episode really as we will probably just do the con the conference finals next episode and then do a whole finals segment for the episode after that for what'll that be? I guess episode 20 by then. But that is going to wrap up eight, episode 18 here. Um, sorry for the technical issues at the beginning and the missed gameplay and all that stuff. It, you know, it, it makes me mad too. So yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, please consider going down below and leaving a like on the video. Also, subscribe if you're new. Please, we're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers, and uh, we're almost halfway there. So, yeah, that'll be greatly appreciated, and that's really going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!